This is the MMA Brief Podcast. Recapping the world of mixed martial arts every single week. With your host, Brandon Johansson. Welcome back to the MMA Brief. Episode 42. Recapping UFC's return to Japan. Yushin Okami vs. Ovent St. Peru in the main event. We're going to start with the main card. Where Juicier Formiga got the first round rear naked choke finish of Oka Sasaki. Taroto Ishihara got a unanimous decision against Rolando Dai. Really good fight. Ishihara dropped him with the right hand in the first round, pounced on him, beat him up on the ground for the remainder of the five minutes. Second round, Rolando Dai showed his striking off a little bit. Then he also started kicking Ishihara in the nuts. I think it was three times they finally took a point, but he took some vicious kicks and knees to the groin. The last one was brutal. I didn't think he was going to come back. To his credit, he did, and then ultimately got the decision victory. Huge nut shots. Kickboxing legend Gokan Saki made his UFC debut in dramatic fashion, knocking out Henrique Da Silva in the first round. Looked brilliant, of course, on the feet. I think he has 58 knockouts in his kickboxing career. He said there was no challenge left there. Comes over to a different sport. Conventional wisdom would say grappling would be his weak spot. Henrique Da Silva got right in his face early on. Gokan Saki displayed his striking, dropping Da Silva. Didn't want to go to the ground with him, had the ref get him back up. Then De Silva's like, all right, I'm going to take this motherfucker down. Didn't get him down. Great takedown defense. Good balance from Gokan Saki. But then Henrique De Silva gets a tie clinch, rips a couple knees and an elbow. Looked like Saki was tired. You're like, oh, shit. It's not going to end well. Out of nowhere, he lands this huge left hand that drops De Silva, and the ref waved it off. Some people went online saying it was an early stoppage. Could have been. But the way he got dropped, I can see why it happened. It was the second knockdown of the round, and he was getting lit up before that. He was looking really good, and all of a sudden, bam, he got knocked out. So some people are like, oh, come on, give him a chance. But if you notice, after the ref called it, he laid on the ground. He didn't protest the stoppage, which is interesting. You see other people online protesting the stoppage. Didn't seem like the guy who got knocked down was that angry about it. So I go by that. The maestro... Young Young Kim knocked out the legend Takanori Gomi in the first round. Made it look pretty easy. Biggest win of his career. The other Dung Young Kim, there's two. There's the stun gun who fights at 170, and then there's the maestro who fights at 155. I don't think they're related. They're just the same name. Dung Young Kim. Jessica Andrade defeated Claudia Gadelia by unanimous decision. Probably one of the best women's fights I've ever seen. Gadelia's hands looked outstanding in the first round. Really fast. Opened up Andrade with an elbow right in her forehead. She was leaking blood. At that point, Andrade is like, fuck this. Gets the fight to the ground in dramatic fashion with a huge takedown. And immediately starts throwing elbows, hammer fist. And actually cuts Gadelia. They're both bleeding all over each other. That was just round one. And then Andrade took over. The rest of the fight. So Claudia looked good for the first three minutes. Got taken down. Got like blood. Andrade was bleeding right in Gedalia's mouth while she was on top of her, just beating her up. It was pretty crazy. Great fight. And Andrade definitely deserved the win. In the main event, Ovin St. Peru did it again. He pulled off only the fifth. Oh, we talked about this before. Found flu choke. I was in Nashville. When he pulled off the third UFC Von Flu choke ever. I was calling it in the crowd. Guy, David, who sat next to me, he can confirm this. I swear. I'm going to get him as a guest one day. And I'll be like, hey, David, did I see that Von Flu choke coming, even though it was only the third one? And he'll tell you, yes, I did. So we knew what Okami shouldn't do. Don't go for a guillotine off your back. I've said it before. That's exactly what his last opponent did, Marcos Hagirio de Lima. 
when I was in Nashville. Went for the guillotine off his back, and OSP pulled it off for the second time. And I was right there, cage side. So watching it on TV, I knew Okami cannot go for a guillotine off his back. Got completely choked unconscious. The look on his face when he started to feel the pressure from the shoulder. He's like, wait, wait, what's up? And then boom, he just went limp, out cold. Okami had never been submitted before, so it was definitely an impressive victory for OSP. And something you, you cannot do against it's this guy. Don't go for a guillotine off your back. Don't do it. Because that's the only way he can pull this move off. If you don't go for the guillotine, he can't do it. But if you do, he's going to make you pay for it. He'll trap your arm, and he'll use his own shoulder to drive that. Boom. Choke you completely out. It was an impressive uh, dismantling. Yushin Okami shot for the takedown immediately. I think OSP didn't have to throw a single strike. He just choked him out. All right, Bellator was on Saturday. That was Friday, UFC fight night in Japan. And on Saturday, Bellator 183, headlined by Benson Henderson and Patricky Pitbull. Impressive comeback for Aaron Pico, who was like the biggest hyped person without a fight ever. He was 0-0 and everyone was talking him up like the biggest prospect in MMA. And he ended up getting rocked and then choked out in his first fight. Came back with a huge knockout of the year contender with a left hand. It was amazing. Watched it live. The left hand just boom. His head kind of rocking. And he just like clapped against the cage like he was sitting down in a chair. Roy Nelson made his Bellator debut. Won a decision. And Patricky Pitbull... Got a split decision victory over the former UFC lightweight champion, Benson Henderson. Who falls to 1-3 in three in his Bellator career. A lot different than you would have thought when he signed with him. You're like, oh shit, of course he's going to be their champion. Didn't work out that way. He's been taking some beatings. Losing some split decisions, which earlier in his career, he got away with a lot of split decisions. Narrow fights, here we go. Who won that one? Benson Henderson was always edging it. Now he's having close fights, and the judges aren't giving it to him. So, you know, a lot of split decisions on his resume. Thank you for listening. Come back next week. Peace.